Yeah, this is going to be an interesting and kind of a tough matchup. We'll see how things shake out here. But we're getting into our Swiss round five here at NAIC. And we're starting with Emmanuel. Unfortunately, not much of a turn, but we have some cards here. Instant charge from that Rotom V that's on the bench here. Going to end the turn and toss things over to Xander, who's starting off with an Irida, of course, going second. Uh, available to play a supporter card here. And that's what we're going to see. And Xander are going to... I'll go ahead and check for some of his price cards. Make sure that he knows what he can count on and what he isn't able to utilize. And with that Urida, we'll be able to search for a Frostlass and a Body Body Puffin to set up double Snorrent and then start getting those damage counters. As we can see, Snorlax has an ability, Rotom has an ability, so that's going to be a pretty big deal. Yeah, and then we're going to see uh, once these cards come out, Emmanuel's going to have a pretty clear idea what we're going to be seeing from this deck here. So, of course, water Pokemon in that Frost Lass, as well as that Buddy Buddy Poffin. That's um, definitely going to be played down here for Xander as well. We're going to grab these Snow Runs out. And uh, I thought this was just a, a PTCGL deck. I'm not going to lie, Pablo. <laughs> I love to see that Xander has brought this to our stage here. Yeah, I think uh, Xander is, is trying to play with that surprise factor that we were yes, talking about yes. earlier, right? The fact that you have this possibility to surprise your opponent, and we are starting to see that. We see the Monkey Dury with the Adrena Brain ability. It's going to be transferring those damage counters yeah. along with the Frostlass, adding those damage counters um, on Emmanuel's side. And honestly, it comes down to Xander not self-KOing his own Pokemon during the game, because yeah. as long as he's able to prevent that, we should be seeing a plethora of damage counters damage Emmanuel's field. Yeah, and I definitely think we're going to see some ways in this deck. I mean, Xander has piloted this so far to a 4-0 undefeated record here. Just going to be that grasping draw from that nice little Cleffa in the active position. We're back over to Emmanuel's side of the field now. And we see that accompanying flute, that brand new card from Twilight Masquerade. Yes. Reveal the top five cards. If there's oh, a basic, you bench it. However, uh, Radiance Arena, definitely not a a super beneficial Pokemon. I think Emmanuel recognizes that as he can pick a different Pokemon. I think it is in Emmanuel's best interest to not have that Radiance Arena in play if possible. Yeah, that way obviously. the damage counters will hopefully build up on Xander Perro's side of the field. Yeah, I thought for a second you had to play them all down from the company flute, but no, you do get to choose here. And I think Emmanuel took a look at that, kind of looked at the board state and was like, oh, let's yeah. put them all wild down instead. And we're going to see this once again here. Second accompanying flute, and we actually see the Radiance Arena once again at yeah. the top, but Emmanuel choosing not to bench the card as it is optional, right? You don't have yes. to put a Pokemon if you don't want to. And yeah, you don't want that Radiant Arena helping out Sander. Mm -hmm. Now, I think seeing this, Emmanuel's probably not very happy because he knows that Monkey Dory is going to oh be gosh. annoying. And we Look see the that. third accompanying flute. Oh my gosh, I should have put this in my caster predictions here. <laughs> that is a lot of flute playing Ooh. that we're seeing. And we are going to see some other choices here for Emmanuel in these Pokemon. Of course, it has to be a basic. We have that Monkey Dory as well as the Manaphy as a selection here. How do you think it, it changes this if uh, Emmanuel puts down an additional Pokemon, which would fill up Xander's bench here, Pablo? I mean, this does prevent, now that the bench is full, yes. there's no more possibility of Radiant Arena until Xander essentially self-KOs a Pokemon. Yeah. Probably assuming that the mana fee is going to go down at some point, right, uh, from your own self-damage from Frostlass. And I think Emmanuel really needs to switch gears here, essentially, into use Chi Yu and try to deck Sander out as soon as possible, but there's no uh, real way to find the Chi Yu just yet. Well, we're going to be seeing a lot of control style cards here, and you see that with that Eerie uh, allowing you to look at your opponent's hand, discard two item cards that you find in there, and that's exactly what just happened. Super Rod hitting the discard pile, but now we're back over to Xander Perot's side, and those Frost Lasses have come out of the woodwork. 
And they're looking pretty spooky, Pablo. That freezing shroud ability is the whole, I guess, purpose of this deck here. We're going to be taking damage uh, on both sides of the field for any Pokemon that has an ability, except, of course, for that Frostlass. Now, this is happening in kind of an invisible turn between our yep. players. It's called Pokemon Checkup. And so that is when this damage is dealt. And then we're back over to Emmanuel's side of the field now. So in between our turns, we'll be continuing to see these damage counters stack up and stack up. And I know we were kind of discussing on paper this matchup, Pablo, that it looks very favored because you kind of just get your Frost Lass out and then you're cruising, right? So is there any other strategies that Emmanuel can kind of go for outside of the Chiyu that we're talking about? I mean, I generally don't think so. There's no, oh, like, no. offensive options, unfortunately, for him to apply any sort of pressure. And gotcha. Xander even chose not to use Clef's ability or yeah. Clef's attack, recognizing that, that the way Emmanuel wins is by deck out, right? And it doesn't matter if th that the Clef is trapped in the active because Xander isn't even intending to attack anyway. <laughs> He's just going to be transferring and transferring the energy, I mean, the damage counters with Adrenal Brain. He's going to probably let the mana fee get KO'd, and then that opens up the space for Radiance Arena. Yes. So, yeah, it's going to be really harsh in Emmanuel. It's going to have to rely a lot on Penny to potentially pick up the Pokemon that are about to be KO'd at some yeah. point. Buy yourself some time. I, I think that's what we're going to be seeing here. I don't know. Not you did have the fire energy. Not choosing. I would have loved to see him go for like mm. four Sealstone switch card and then start attacking his opponent's deck. You got to wonder why. That was not the choice at this moment. But now it's on Sander, and yeah. more damage counters being built up. Four on each Pokemon with an ability, yes. and now Adrena Brain, the first Adrena Brain that we're going to yes, see. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I think it's not the first one, but I oh, would say us. arguably. Oh, no, no, we saw one before. Oh, the, yeah, that's true, it, that's true. It was we like, saw this it was once. Arguably, like more value yeah, here on this one. Yeah, this one's <laughs> going to be more significant, for <laughs> <Yes>. sure. <laughs> yeah, it's Monkey Dory in a dream out here, everybody. So <laughs> you are going to be seeing this Monkey Dory do some work here in this matchup. It's it's the only one on the bench, but the ability to uh, move those damage counters onto Emmanuel's field is exactly what we're looking to do here as Xander. So we're playing through these cards. Of course, another Monkey Dory can come out of the deck here off of that Ultra Ball, discarding a four Seal Stone, as well as a Buddy Buddy Poffin. So some easy fodder here going into the disc card pile to get that Monkey Dory out. Yeah, Monkey Dory in hand, making sure that he has access to that resource. I think Xander might choose to use Clefa this turn, but first we're going to see the three damage counters get transferred yeah. from Adrena Brain onto the Rotom, which is a higher HP Pokemon. All and right. there's a Clefa draw. Yeah, we're going to see that grasping draw. Tiny little hands grasping for these cards on that Clefa. Emmanuel taking up these damage counters now onto our, the right side of the field. And we are going to see that Penny come into action here. Pablo Chiyu is going to be the Pokemon moved up into that active position. Yep, Snorlax goes to the hand and uh, no need to rebench it, right? Yep. Nothing to really trap. And you're not interested in uh, blocking anything because your opponent has zero offensive pressure. Ooh, we're going to see the heroes cape on the Rotom to try to protect it Beefy. as best as you can. And then we're, we're going to see the Jealously Singe. Yeah, what a name for a move there. Jealously Singe, it's going to discard the top two cards of Xander's deck. Now, this is what we're looking to see here from Emmanuel, is these discards and slowly just discarding more and more until the potential deck out down the line. But is that going to be enough, or are we going to be here long enough before Xander takes these knockouts with all of these damage counters? I mean, seems like Sander's oh. going to try and be, yeah, very aggressive with the double Monkey Dory, no Radiance Arena. And I think another funny thing that Sander could actually do is use his own ability, let the damage pile up, knock his own Pokemon out, and then use Blood Moon Ursa Luna to start attacking. Oh, uh, by wow. yeah, that's forcing true. your opponent to take prize cards and decreasing your own Blood Moon Ursa Luna uh, damage cost. But we saw six damage counters get transferred. Uh, five, sorry, to the yes. Chiyu, applying pressure that way. And now the damage in between turns on, during the Pokemon checkup. So a lot of things happening here. Yeah, a lot of things happening. A lot of damage counters being placed onto the field. Of course, you know, that Rotom V is a little beefier now, plus 100 HP. 
thanks to that hero's cape, but we're, we're, we're still hanging on here. That Chiyu does not have abilities, so it doesn't stack in between turns, but that does not stop Xander from still putting those damage counters onto it and having that aggression there as far as what to target down in this matchup. So Emmanuel, large hand here. We're going to see that Team Yells cheer from Emmanuel. Yeah, Team Yells cheer, gonna put back that airy, gonna put back the penny, which is so essential to prevent Sander from essentially winning this game. Now, one uh, tough mountain to climb for Emmanuel is that there's four Iotos in Sander's deck that will be able to replenish his deck despite the Chiyu discard. So Aww. Emmanuel really needs to hit some good Jealously Sentiers with discarding Iotos. Yes. Uh, well, we're going to see what it is. Top two here hitting the discard pile. Just an Ultra Ball as well as a Counter Catcher. Yeah, not super significant as the no. damage does pile up from that Freezing Shroud. Now, on first stamp, I don't think it's uh, going to matter too much in this match. Emmanuel has zero intention of taking knockouts at this point in time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we're, we're slowly getting to our knockouts here in this game, Pablo. All right, looks like we are back. So sorry about those technical difficulties. I guess Chen Pao just wanted a little screen time, huh, Pablo? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Chen Pao got jealous that it's probably not that good anymore, but still <laughs> wants to show up on yes. stream. Well, let's get back into this match. Honestly, you haven't missed much. There are a lot more damage counters on this field, though. What do you think about this board state and what we're looking at now, Pablo? Yeah, I think Emmanuel debating whether to use another penny and which Pokemon to use it on because True. Uh, yeah. Rotom it now has 240 damage uh, on it. Does choose to essentially heal and save the Chiyu at this point in time. Might have to let go of the Rotom or we can see another Rotom get benched. Yeah, it looks like that is what is being debated here by Emmanuel and that's going to be the option from this hand, Rotom V hitting the bench here as well. It's just going to be an instant charge, drawing three additional cards to the hand. Yep, three extra cards, three extra resources. We're going to have the extra freezing damage onto those Rotoms. 260 damage on Ooh. the active. So one Adrenal Brain will finally allow Sander to take that down. Yeah, honestly, kind of cool to see. It's a little bit anticlimactic to watch on the stream as far as just shifting some damage around, knocking it out. But in theory, it's a very cool way to knock out a Pokemon, Pablo. We do not get to see this very often. And now with the addition of Monkey Dory from Twilight Masquerade, we're getting to see these super cool plays here. Frost Last being incredible as well. And another card from Twilight Masquerade that stacks up all of these damage counters. Of course, the ability stacks. So we're taking two every time between these players on Pokemon Checkup. It looks like they're, they're uh, calculating the damage here in between these turns. Yep. 260 damage on the active. Two more from Frostlass at this point in time. So 10 HP left on yes. that Rotom. Will Barely. Will choose to penny that up or can he even penny that up? I don't think I see a penny in mm. Emmanuel's hand. Yeah, I do not either. Uh, oh, nope, that's not it. I think that's it. a boss, yeah. yeah. So we're going to see the Misfortune Sisters perhaps get played. We could see an Iodo as well. Yeah. Is that? Yeah, that is Misfortune Sisters, right? Uh, yeah, the, yes, the yeah, rainbow. the rainbow. Yeah. Yes, that is it. I see. Yep, yeah, now. they all look kind of similar. They do, <laughs> they do look similar. Whoa, yeah. so... Oh, we're not. Emmanuel is actually ahead in yeah, prices, I was so we to cannot say, play the counter catcher yes, at they're... this point in time. I mean, it was a while ago that prize card was taken, so but it is not currently active. Shut that down here, but it looks like we're going to see an Iono instead from Emmanuel. Yeah, that Iono will replenish Sanders deck, essentially, as he definitely had more than six cards in his hand. Uh, we'll have to see what Emmanuel is looking for here. Still had that four seal stone, I think, available to him. So could yeah. have used it to find maybe the switch card to continue decking out Sander. There's just uh, not a lot he's going to be able to do with a five card hand and the Rotom going down. All right, 
we do see the instant charge. Three more cards added to the hand and more damage counters from Frostlass's ability here. All right, yep, we are back on Emmanuel's side of the field now. Um, that Temple Sino uh, is in play here just as a stadium, not really doing much. And, uh, oh, sorry, we're on Xander's side, and we're seeing some damage counters. Or are we in between turns? Pablo, I'm, <laughs> I'm lo losing <laughs> no, track of that, a rat. That, that was a Drenner Brain uh, oh, okay, sending okay. the damage to uh, the Rotom. So okay. that one's definitely going to go down in between turns now. And Xander, without having attacked with anything other than a Cleffa, is now two prizes away from winning this match. Yep, two prizes, and I cannot believe, I mean, yeah, that Cleffa has not even moved here. And we're getting these prize cards in a very alternative way from what we usually see. And that's very cool here. Emmanuel looking at a ton of cards on the board, choosing which ones to discard from Xander's deck. Yeah, or sorry, hand. Earth and Vessel and he's doing Heavy Ball, not super impo impactful cards at this point. And we're not even seeing the super effective glasses, which allows uh, Xander to one KO Snorlax with the Minion, which Emmanuel so far doesn't know is in the deck, yeah, but it's another tool that Xander has in order to essentially accelerate his win condition. Yeah, we haven't even seen it yet, Pablo. I don't think it's been revealed at all, but this Chi Yu now on Emmanuel's side has a Bravery Charm, is going to continue to singe up these cards and get them into the discard pile. And then it's over to Xander now after that. And it's just the Chi Yu in the active position here now for Emmanuel. And honestly, that deck is uh, its not looking very thin. <laughs> There's still a lot of cards there, but we'll see how this turns out. There's a lot of game to be played and a lot of cards as well in Emmanuel's deck. Yeah, still a lot of cards available and only one Iono gone so far. Another one in Sander's hand. So plenty of ways to replenish the deck. Now, funnily enough, Sander is now only damaging himself. Emmanuel doesn't have any Pokemon in play yeah. that get damage counters from Frostless. Now, you do see the six damage counters being transferred from Adrenobrain. Yeah. And now, Sander will actually let this Monkey Dory go down this turn. I'm pretty sure that was on purpose. He only transferred damage from this Monkey yes. Dory to the active. So we have to wonder if Sander is just trying to open up a bench space to make sure that he doesn't lose uh, to his own self-damage by utilizing Radiance Arena at this point. Yep, that is super important part of this deck here for Xander. Now we're going to see that Rainbow Misfortune Sisters coming out of the field. We're going to see some more discards. These are our control cards that we see so frequently that have been very popular in all of these control style decks. Look at the top five of your opponent's deck and discard any number of item cards you find in there. Such a powerful card. Yeah, usually a very powerful card indeed. But at this point, since you can't yeah. discard the Ionos, there's nothing to stop Frostless from continuing exactly. to damage Sanders' Pokemon so that Emmanuel can stop receiving that damage. Now, the Monkey yeah. Dory does go down in the Pokemon checkup. Emmanuel has now taken two prizes without actually attacking <laughs> either. Yes. So a very peculiar game we are watching here. I know, exactly. It's definitely not something I thought I was going to see, but this nest ball going to go into the deck here for Xander. And it's going to be a fresh Monkey Dory coming down. So still removing that uh, previous unhealthy Monkey Dory off of the field. And this is a fully uh, healthy one now. Yeah, so Xander's deck is actually looking thinner than I thought it was. Yeah. So we're all getting closer and closer to that potential deck out. No Radiant Serena uh, does have the energy to potentially fully heal this Monkey Dory, but yeah, Sanders deck had around like 14, maybe 18 cards, I could tell. So I doing know. 60 damage is also not the most impactful amount, right? Yeah, the sleeves were definitely deceiving there, but again, Emmanuel doesn't have any of these ability Pokemon. The Chi Yu is only taking damage at this point from the Monkey Dory transfer, so. We may have bought enough time here to potentially uh, deck out Xander Perot from Emmanuel's side. 
Yeah, we generally might have. And Sander, is he in a little bit of trouble, perhaps? I mean, if Manuel is able to, like, yeah. penny bench the Pidget B, penny up the Chi Yu, promote the Pidget B, shuffle it. Oh, no, Pidget B only works on the bench. So there, there will definitely be a point where Manuel needs to do something about healing up this Chi Yu. That 60 damage will yeah. build up over time. But can Emmanuel withstand that Monkey Dory pressure and get to the deck out against Sander? There's a Penny, which is <laughs> definitely very useful. Yeah, I guess unless you Penny up your only Pokemon, <laughs> which I don't think we're going to be seeing happening here. A Penny now in the hand here for Emmanuel. I think Sander recognizes that he's in a little bit of peril, and that's why I he's trying so. to, like, self-KO some of his Pokemon to have access to that Blood Moon or Saluna, but can he self-KO two or three more to attack with it? I that's going to be a tough, a tough task, yeah. If only we could move those damage counters to the Cleffa and just knock it out, huh? Yeah. <laughs> now, the Psychic Energy does hit the Discord pile, and with the Super Rod gone for Sander, yeah. that could be another impactful thing. Now, there are two Ionos in Sander's hand, and he sees that. Emmanuel has that penny in his hand, and he Here wants it go. at the bottom of the deck. Yep, that was revealed, and now it is gone here out of Emmanuel's hand at the bottom. Going to draw into four cards over on the right side of the field. Xander only getting two here. We're in between turns. Those Monkey Dory are stacking up those damage counters thanks to having an ability here in Emmanuel. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Whoa. the Benny. I mean, that, I think it definitely comes down to that. Xander was just going to transfer six more damage counters and win the next turn from him to play. And for Xander to self-KO a lead. Yeah, that is going to be the question. Xander was able to establish those snow runs from that Buddy Buddy Poffin. Get everything that was kind of needed to get down, as well as the Cleffa uh, being the starter Pokemon in our last game we saw in between these players to draw into a lot of cards as well. Hisuian Heavy Ball is going to be played on this first turn here for Xander. So we're going to take a quick look at these prize cards from Xander. Uh, if there is a basic Pokemon, you can switch it out here. Uh, for that Hisuian Heavy Ball. Yeah, he's writing everything down, as most players do, right? It's very important to hey. know which resources yeah. you have access to, which ones you don't. And seems like he will choose that Snorrent over the Radiance Arena. Yep, Snow Run's going to come out of the prize cards. Hisuian Heavy Ball joining them. And now we're shuffling those up, and we're going to put them back down here. But yes, it leaves so much mental pressure to just know exactly what is in your prize cards on turn one as well. You love to, or sorry, yeah, well, Xander's turn one here. And now we're going to see this Ultra Ball discarding a counter catcher. No, I mean, I don't see, yeah, why would you value why the mana fee at all? <laughs> yeah, yeah mana fee, <laughs> definitely not needed against Snorlax. Pretty straightforward discard here. And yeah, Xander going to go for a few extra cards. Has access to that Rotom to instant charge, and it's okay for Sander to draw some cards, right? But yeah. it's very important for him to set up that double Frostlass. Maybe a single Frostlass is not enough damage piling up to uh, really pressure awesome. yeah. Emmanuel. So, ideal setup would probably be double Frostlass, just like we saw the game before. Exactly, and we could potentially still see that. We're going to see this Iono for both players. So, they're going to draw into six new cards on both sides of the field. But are we going to be able to see another snow run come down? We do see that mini or yeah. that we didn't see at all in the last game between these players. Um, I think it was stuck in the prize cards, wasn't it? No, uh, I, I don't remember um, generally. The... But yeah, I mean, mini could come in handy if at some point Snorlax does come out um, to play. But as we've mentioned, right, why do you need to trap something in the active? Yeah. You can just send damage counters from anywhere on the field. It's like you're attacking um, with no end. I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. It's you like play it's your Pokemon down, yeah. and then you're just, like, hanging out yeah. pretty much, <laughs> <Generally>, honestly. <laughs> you don't care what's active. Especially if your opponent's not applying any pressure whatsoever. Yes. Well, this time around, we are going to see that Minior come down onto the bench here for Xander, as well as that first Dark Energy attachment onto the active Monkey Dory. Of course, we do not have that additional snow runs, and of course, we can't 
we can't evolve until next turn into that frost last. So we'll have to see uh, how that affects the game here a little bit. But so far, Emmanuel only has that Chiyu down. And do you think he's going to just stick with that Chiyu and the active, just going aggressive with these discards, Pablo? Yeah, I generally think so. That way, no damage Ooh. gets built up on your side of the field. Minior does get uh, quotation marks trapped in the active, and we're going to see that jealously slinge. Uh, jealously singe. It's That's hard so to say. hard to say. <laughs> yes. Um, be used over and over and over. And right Ooh. now, uh, Xander's only going to be dealing a little bit of damage, like 10, 20 each turn until he sets up the second Frost Last. So that's why he's actively using Instant Charge. Not because yeah. he wants to deck to out, save these cards. but he needs to set up that second Frost Last. Exactly. Now one Frost Last um, hitting the discard pile off of that Singe as well as the Irida. This uh, one is in the hand, though, at least for now, safe in the hand. Yep. And that second one has been evolved into on the field at this point in time. Now, Miss Fortune Sisters is going to help Emmanuel uh, with the discard, right? Even if it's just a nest ball, not the most useful card, but it is one less card in Sanders deck getting yeah. closer to the deck out. I don't think we're going to see Emmanuel do anything, anything else. His only goal is to heal and keep that Chiyu <laughs> alive as long as he possibly can. Yes. Okay, so let me ask you, Pablo, which deck are you vibing with right now? Do you like this Frostlass control style deck? I, I have to admit, I talked to Sander before the event. Yeah. I, I built it a little differently than his build. I have Mimikyu and I have my own Snorlax in there, so I'm just trying Whoa, to like okay. block whatever my opponent is trying to do as the damage builds up. I'm targeting down whatever threatens Mimikyu or whatever threatens threatens uh, Snorlax. So I absolutely yeah. love that we are seeing this um, this come to play to the stream. Uh, yeah. Wish it was in a, a slightly more interactive matchup <laughs> with more things to target yes. down and the damage placement. But I absolutely love the combo of Frostlass with Monkey Dory. I think it's as soon as I saw the spoilers yeah. for the Twilight Masquerade cards, I fell in love with that. Oh, that is so wholesome to hear. <laughs> And uh, you know what's not so wholesome? All of these damage counters <laughs> now stacking up here on the board. Uh, of course, more on Xander's side of the field than Emmanuel's at this point in time. We're going to see this Eerie looking yep. at the hand here from Xander. It's a large hand, so <laughs> a lot of options for potential discards. But it's going to be that Earthen Vessel as well as a Switch Cart being discarded from Xander's hands. Yeah, two less cards total. One more Singe being utilized to discard. Oof. Yeah, uh, decent discards there. But yeah. with that other Snorrent already in play, now yes. this is where the damage is going to really start stacking up uh, on Sander so that then it can be transferred to an all. However, you can only transfer right now three damage counters as it's only one Monkey yeah. Dory. So Sander does need somehow to open up bench space. And I think we're going to see the self KO on the Minior. Uh, Minior. Yeah, I think that's probably what we'll see here. Kind of the same strategy that we saw from Xander in the last game. Just making sure to establish double Monkey Dory, double Frost Last. That way you get double the damage counters as well as the transfer over of those damage counters and have the most effect. I mean, the, the fact that these abilities stack with each other is just very awesome here. Jealously Singe taking out two more cards. That Minior is going to go down here for Xander. Emmanuel taking a prize card but not from um, his own damage yeah. on the field. <laughs> Chiyu still at 40 damage on it so far. And we're back to Xander's side of the field. Now going Ooh. into the deck with an Irida. We get a full look at the deck here now, Pablo. What are you seeing? Well, what I'm not seeing is Nest Ball. I don't think I saw Nest Ball, so I don't think Xander will be able to bench that second Monkey Dory as he would have liked. So only yeah. three damage counters are going to be transferred onto this uh, Chiyu instead of six, which applies way, way, way less pressure overall. Um, mm -hmm. So fortunate situation for Sander. And now comes the debate. Do you try to instant charge to find those Monkey Duris? Or do you play passively and just transfer more damage? Yeah. But right now, there's a lot more damage building up on Sander's bench, uh, uh, on, on Sander's field, than he's actually transfer over mm -hmm. to Emmanuel. So Emmanuel is being able to build up his hand and yeah. probably heal this Chiyu at least once or twice before he needs to do anything about it. Yeah, that's where the pressure is really on here Ooh. for Sander. Oh, are we going to see 
swing here from Monkey Dory? Yeah, we do. Whoa. <laughs> That's another way to approach it. Monkey yeah, Dory I didn't even think about that. A mind bend for 60 damage and confuses the active Pokemon. So oh my now gosh, you have to look flip every single time you want to attack and discard wow. cards. So just everything going well for Sander here. Well, looks like it, Manuel. Now has a, a confused little goldfish in the active <laughs> position, but we're going to be joined by another fish on the field now in that man scene. Yeah, and we are going to see the penny to heal off <laughs> that Chiyu. Confusion no more. <laughs> Confusion no more. So, Emmanuel does have an issue right now where he needs to um, trap, like, well, he needs to bring something else up. Otherwise, yeah. Well, Kitori is just going to continue to use Mind Bend every time. That's going to really get in the way of uh, Chiyu's discard, and it's going to add a lot of damage. A lot of damage on the field. I mean, we already have a ton of damage over on Xander's side, and it's just going to continue to stack up here now. But that Kleppa is going to be brought out from Emmanuel's side onto Xander's field. Yeah, Mantine, very good. It's the it's what uh, Snorlax players need to use to compensate for the loss of the Echoing Horn, and it's usually a pretty good strategy, but will that be enough? I mean, that 30 HP Lefa does get in the way, prevents the Radiance Arena that I've been uh, mentioning. Maybe that's not even going to see play at any point, but... Yeah, that's true. Well, I mean, right now it's in the prize card, so... Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of stuck there at the moment. And now we have a confused man sign here in the active position with a ton of damage counters on it. Emmanuel having to choose what to bench down as far as now. It's going to be the Mimikyu as well as that Rotom V being benched for Emmanuel's side. And then looks like just an instant charge here. Yeah, now funnily enough, Emmanuel might also want Sander to take prizes on these Pokemon so that mm -hmm. his counter catcher gets true, activated true. and he can bring up anything other than the Monkey Dory so he's not pressured. So we have an interesting dynamic where both players want the other want their own Pokemon to go down somehow. Uh, Emmanuel for the counter catcher activation, Sander for bench space issues uh, to yes. be able to bench another <laughs> Monkey Dory. So a very quirky uh, game we're looking at. Poo. Yeah, these aren't very nice Pokemon trainers, Pablo. <laughs> yeah. Knocking out their own Pokemon. You take a prize. No, no, no. You take a <laughs> no, prize. Please. No, no, no. You, you take, take a prize. A prize. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a very interesting dynamic that we're seeing here at NAIC. But I expect nothing less from our players. This Monkey Dory is just continuing to confuse this poor Mantine in the active position as well as these damage counters going from Xander's field onto Emmanuel and then ticking up as well in between turns, at least from on that Rotom V. Yeah, this is so funny. Like, it's a race of the Rotoms to see who gets knocked out first, who yeah. goes down in prizes first. Sander does benefit from Emmanuel, I mean, from him giving prizes to Emmanuel because his Ionos will be better at preventing the deck out. But then you have to wonder if Emmanuel will be able to trap something like the Mowal or the Frostlass because Sander doesn't run too many energies. There's already two here. I think wow. he's lost his Super Odd, as we see here. He only plays one, and he needs those dark energies on the Monkey Duries. And here there's a go. Rotom finally going down. But this puts Emmanuel ahead in prizes, meaning <laughs> it's going to be harder to use your counter catcher. Yeah, definitely harder because you have that many more prize cards going down, which means Sander is not necessarily catching up here in the prize race. Of course, those damage counters from the Monkey Dory being transferred as well. Mimikyu up to 60 now. And Rotom V up to 90. This might be one of the weirdest games we've ever had on stream booth. There's like <laughs> yep. so um, many things happening, like the damage in between turns. That's something that we hadn't had in a very long time. You still have stadiums that yeah. did that, and abilities that did that. But uh, Frostlass, this brand new card from Twilight Masquerade, offers this very interesting dynamic. Yeah, it's definitely very cool to see. And uh, honestly, after this display of it as well from Xander, we might see some, some more players maybe pick it up. But the thing is, as why it's good at NAIC is because you do have that surprise factor there. And then people are like, wait, I actually have to like think about playing against this <laughs> after that. So we'll see if it disappears after this and Xander will be the sole pilot of it. But that Mantine is going down now. That's at least one prize card here, as well as that Mimikyu joining the discard pile. Two prize cards taken from Xander's side of the field. 
And Emmanuel is going to have to choose what to bench from here on out. Pokey Gear 3.0 starting off this turn here for Emmanuel. Looking at these seven cards, going to be able to grab a supporter out of the deck off, off of them. Yeah, now since uh, the Iona was played, the Chiyu is now swimming in the bottom of the deck along with uh, other resources, so no more deck pressure. Emmanuel is ahead in prizes, so no counter catcher usability and can bench Norlax. This Rotom will be going down in between turns at this point in time. Does have 170 damage on it, so two more from Frostlass yeah, will which knock we have. it out. Mm -hmm. Now Sander will be ahead in the prize cards, but oh, I don't know what but you can his do turn. as Emmanuel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he might nest ball for the Chiyu. He might force Seal Stone for the fire, bench the Snorlax, and then hope for the best. But the damage will just keep piling on, and there's nothing he can do about yeah. it. Yeah, and that is uh, this deck, really, this Frost Last Monkey Dory deck. It's in it for the long con here, Pablo. And that is exactly what we're seeing. Emmanuel is going to find that Chiyu once again here. And it's coming down, not swimming anymore at the bottom of the deck. <laughs> <laughs> not swimming at the bottom of the deck, indeed. So we're going to see Emmanuel uh, for a Seal Stone, presumably for the Fire Energy, half the Chiyu ready. but. Emmanuel is in a lose-lose situation. If he benches Snorlax and then Rotom goes down in between turns and he promotes the Snorlax, then there's no way for him to switch out into Chiyu next turn to be able to continue to try to deck out Sander. And if yeah. he promotes the Chiyu and doesn't bench the Snorlax, then that Chiyu is just going to be confused once again by the mind bend. So a horrible <laughs> situation to be in here for Emmanuel. And I can't fathom how Sander could possibly lose this match. Yeah, I'm not seeing it either, unfortunately, for Emmanuel. But yeah, taking a 2 0 oh, win, still being undefeated here at NAIC, it would be huge here for Xander Perot with such a unique deck as well. We're going to see those prize cards go down now off of that Rotom B. Yeah, the Rotom does go down in, in between. between turns. Yeah, yeah during that Pokemon checkup stage that you very kindly explained to us. <laughs> Some people don't know about it. You know what's funny? Did you play the yeah. pre-release format of this? I Pablo? did not, know. Oh, well, Frostlass and Monkey Dory were both in the pre-release. Oh, so okay. it's it's given me a visions back to <laughs> that. Uh, very interesting dynamics that we saw there with ability Pokemon and having to tick up and keep track of those damage counters at a pre-release event is pretty wild. But those Monkey Dories are doing work here now, transferring um, some of those damage counters off of Xander's field. Uh, now we're going to see, of course, that mind bend as well from Xander, which is going to confuse that Snorlax. Confused and asleep, confused technically. Confused and asleep. Asleep on the art <laughs> and confused in, uh, in the game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to see uh, he's Ooh, that's a cool heavy one. ball. Yeah, the foil, the mm -hmm. foil prize pack he's doing yeah, heavy ball. Yeah, love it. Love when we get to see those. Hisuian Heavy Ball is going to join the prize cards. Snorlax coming out of the prize cards here for Emmanuel. A uh, pal pad on bottom. Company flutes. We saw so many of those in the last game. I don't know what Emmanuel can do here. Has a boss's orders. Can uh, I think he needs to wait for the Snorlax to be KO'd and then try yeah. to go boss and continue with the Singe deck out strategy. But there's going to be six damage counters being piled up onto that Chiyu every single turn, regardless of what Pokemon is in the active. So he's just yeah. slowing down the inevitable KO. Yep, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. The transfer of these damage counters back over to Emmanuel's field. Of course, that mind bends. Doing a little bit of damage here now. Uh, reduced thanks to that Defiance Vest on the Snorlax. Yeah, Defiance Vest does reduce the damage, which maybe Emmanuel would have preferred that Snorlax to go down already instead <laughs> of uh, being in the active. Though with That's all the true. damage manipulation that Sander has, like yeah. he could have definitely worked it out to where he knocked out the Snorlax and then was able to mind bend the Chiyu. That's like the only thing that exactly. Xander needs to fear at this point. And there we have it. Emmanuel recognizes the situation and Sander Pero will <laughs> walk away 2-0 in this very quirky